Well, lo, aloha, kakahiaka, everybody. Today is October 15th. It's 9 a.m. Hawaii time. And if it's not October 15th, 9 a.m. Hawaii time for you, it means that you are watching the pre-recorded version. Skip ahead for about four or five minutes or so. Uh, but in, uh, what, for the, uh, the 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 formal program. But right now, we're gonna we're gonna talk story with my good friends uh, Dylan Nonaka, who's from the Big Island. How's it, Dylan? Awesome. How are you? All right, man. And we got uh, Scott Starsman, who's usually from Oahu, but Scott's at a top secret location today. Scott, how's it going, buddy? Good. I'm holed up in a bunker over here. So Hold, yeah, we're hard. not going to tell you. It can't say where he is. Now, GPS locations notwithstanding, <laughs> but but it looks good. It looks good. You're looking good, Scott. You're looking good. So hi, everybody. And uh, in case you're wondering, Heidi's not going to be with us for today. She's on. A, uh, she was just coming back from a, a trip from L.A. and uh, was not able to make the show. We love her and we miss her. And we're going to see her on the next time. So uh, let's do our little our, our little warm up, our little warm up roundup. Uh, first of all, Christopher jumped in. Chris is Chris is the first guy. Chris is the first guy of the show today. Hello, Chris. Welcome back. Christopher Longley, uh, welcome back to the show, and uh, great to have you back. Everybody else, kind of give us a shout out as you come on in, so we know who's with us. It's always good to kind of have the family back. It's always good fun. So, Dylan, give us the lowdown here. What's the shirt? What's the background? What's what? What's happening? Just here at the home, the home studio office. Uh, got my Sig Zane on, my Hilo designer Kahlo leaves. Um, yeah, just a just a nice day, and it rained. It rained all day yesterday here after about two weeks of of almost no rain so it's an interesting dynamic with uh the vog being back that the rain has kind of stopped after a couple of years of really rainy wet weather it's it's i don't know if it's exactly related to the vog but it kind of co it correlates the vog it came back and then it dried up it dried up yeah immediately interesting so, interesting so so the positive so thing is i don't have to cut my grass every week because like that's my, my part-time job is i gotta cut my grass every single week when it was raining like every day so <laughs> I might be able to go two weeks or 10 days without cutting my grasses. This, you, you, uh, this week. Dylan, as a guy that's very, very sensitive to using his time and outsourcing work, don't you have like the yard guys come on over and do your, do your yard work? So it's, it's part of my mental health. Like uh, uh, I, I, I really enjoy weed whacking for whatever reason. <laughs> so, Hey man, you so know, I, I, Hey, you and know, I put, a, I put a podcast on or, you know, an audio book on and I go out there and then, you know, you just kind of do your thing. It's good physical labor. And then afterwards you can look at the, you know the the fruits of your labor and so sometimes it's sitting in front of a computer all day and on the phone you need that so i definitely that's like some nice time aside you know every week either on a friday afternoon or a saturday morning and like it's grass cutting time and i get to spend time with my boys and, and put in some work so no that's so. a great that's a great thing i i actually have the same kind of a situation with washing my car it's therapeutic i put the podcast on kind of sit there and kind of you know you know Every, that's one every, thing I will never, I've never washed a car in my whole life. Let's throw these 15 bucks, drive through in five minutes and I'm out. So, and you know what? I haven't cut, <laughs> I haven't cut grass since I was 10. So there you go. <laughs> you know, that, 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 that's how it all flies. So Judy's with us. Hey, Judy, welcome back, Judy. Uh, Judy is a member of the Islander Ohana. Uh, Judy, welcome back. And Judy's been and working a, with, with and a Hawaii yeah. homeowner now. And a Hawaii homeowner, absolutely. Work with Dylan uh, on a home on the big one, which is, which is awesome. Uh, who else is with us? Will, Will Sure. Aloha, y'all from Festus, Missouri. Glad to see y'all. Hey, man, welcome back. Uh, great to see you, Will. Welcome back with us. Patrick is back. Patrick, part of the Ohana over here, practically. P uh, Patrick, uh, certainly part of the Facebook Ohana that meets every other Friday. Patrick, welcome back from uh, Rally, North Carolina. And, and Pam, Pam is back again. Welcome, Pam. Aloha from Denver. Good to see y'all. It's like the whole family's getting back together. I love this part of the show, actually. Spencer, aloha from New York City. Always enjoy your show. And you know what, Spencer? The show is enjoyable because you're here. That's what makes the show fun. If it was just, if it was just me, Dylan, and Scott, which is actually how it started, it wouldn't be that much fun. It's 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 way more it's way more fun when people are so yes, yes, Judy, exactly, a homeowner. Val, Val is back with us. Val, welcome back. Uh, good morning, happy Aloha Friday, and Aloha Friday to you, uh, Jessica. Jessica, Jess is back. Jess is a. Uh, uh, a member of the Islander Ohana and also a Hawaii homeowner through Scott on Oahu. So, uh, Jess, give us the, la the the latest of your adventures. Did you get furniture yet? You were getting some furniture for, for your house, the dogs. Uh, how are the dogs doing, Jess? Uh, Spencer is back with us. Uh, Spencer is a Kona resident now, too. Congratulations, Spencer. Awesome. Uh, welcome. Enjoy Kona. Uh, Spencer, I'm curious if you're enjoying how uh, Dylan, we're, we're just... Just before the show started, we're, we're or no, or when the show, yeah, Dylan was telling us about the the rain, the the rain pattern shift. Uh, Dylan, I'm sure it's a sign of global warming and the impending collapse of 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 the world as we know it as well. You you forgot to mention that. 
uh, and and Jeff, Jeff is with us. Aloha from Michigan. Welcome, Jeff. Uh, great everyone to kind of see y'all. Hey, folks, start to think about the questions. We got a great show for you today. We got a bunch of planned questions, of course, but uh, your questions matter the most. Scott, give us the update. What's going on, buddy? Oh, I've upgraded my coffee cup today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stepping up. Last week I went with a bigger one. This one's going with a mega. This is like something you would get at 7-Eleven or Circle K, right? Super size me. Now, right, hold, hold, hold that back. I don't up. even know what this thing is, to be honest with you. It's got some kind of holder on it, but it's got a pour spout. So I don't know. I thought about filling it up with coffee and going to town, but eh, it's probably better not. <laughs> oh freak, man, you'd freak a... your wrist if that was full of liquid trying to hold that thing. <laughs> my, my right forearm would definitely be bigger than my left forearm. I could drink in that thing for a couple of days. <laughs> that could be like a, a, a communal kava bowl. We could all just kind of pour it a bunch of kava, folks, is the um is the Polynesian um uh, narcotic. It's a narcotic sort of a drink. It's actually used for ceremonies, uh, typically spiritual type of ceremonies. Uh, it has a lot of medicinal purposes. It comes from the kava root uh, and it tastes like mud. It tastes exactly like mud, uh, but it's a powerful thing. And it's like a communal sharing thing. It's a great way. It's a great way to spread COVID. You bring a bunch yeah. of people over, <laughs> y'all share out of the bowl and you pass it around and everybody catches COVID and everybody can kind of, you know, Isn't think that of funny where our minds go now. Oh man, it, it's I, the worst. I was watching that Texas, the end of that Texas A&M Alabama game and Texas A&M won and the entire stadium goes out on the field, everybody. And my first instinct is, wow, that whole, the entire team may be out for the next game due to COVID protocols or something. No one's wearing masks. <laughs> It, uh, I, it, I, was it, the, I was at the Patriots Tampa Bay game last weekend and it was no masks. I mean, it was, it was crazy. So. Well, I, I think what's 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 weird about this whole thing is that you know this the the you're really seeing the um the uh the diversion of states and and state cultures right state values and it's it's kind of weird right because here we are in Hawaii where you know we're we're just short of lockdowns right we got mask you know hardcore lock you know mask masking you know social all this kind of stuff is kind of still in place and uh, you go to a place like Florida. And it's, it's as if it doesn't even exist, you know, and it's just, it's weird to kind of put those two together because it, because all we know is what we live it's, in, right? It, the thing is, it's, it's like, it's fake here, right? This is why we've had a lot of community spread. It's slowed down now, but people comply and do the right thing and go out in public and wear their mask at the store. But people are having gatherings all over the place. You go to the beaches and they're full of folks and gatherings. It's like, you know, so in their private life, when they're not required to, they're, they're doing what they normally do. And then, you know, in the public areas where, you know, we're told we're supposed to, people also are following the rules, but it's almost like, you know, it's fake, right? It's a fake, in the, it's a fake sense of security. In so. the, in the, in the public space, I, in, in the public area, Dylan, I put my mask on with, while I'm driving my car with the windows rolled up by myself, I still got my mask on, <laughs> but you know, privately, you know, anyway, Hey, we hey, got some off. The positive for the mask is I got the company logo and team name on my mask, and I get a ton of advertising off of that. I went to TSA the the, the other week and, and had two ladies say, "Aren't you the real estate guy on Facebook?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's me." And so you know, all right. great great advertising. So I'm all about it. Hey, you get you might as well make the most of it, right? Absolutely. I have to tattoo it on my forehead when when the masks go away. You know, so I'm gonna tattoo a mask on my face. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> So this one always looks like I'm wearing a mask. Anyway, hey, Joan. Joan is with us. Joan Valentine is with us. Aloha. Joan, uh, great to, great for you to be here with us. Um, and we've got uh, Mary Jean, who's freezing in Illinois. Right, exactly, Mary Jean. I was born in Chicago, 40 below with the wind chill, man. I, I, I'm, I was there, but I left there when I was 21 years old and, and never went back. Uh, MK is back. Welcome, MK. Good to see you. Aloha, MK. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, uh, Chris. Chris, yeah, Scott must really need some coffee. Yeah, it's a Scott. Scott, isn't it your 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 cup is in proportion to how much work you've got to get done? Isn't that what what's going on? So it's an indicator of how hot the market is. It's <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I start drinking out of like a little European espresso cup, okay, now we know the market's going in the wrong direction. Oh man, now the market's going to man. Oh my god, it's 905 ready. We've already kind of passed up our fun. And there's Bernard on. Hey, welcome, Bernard. I've got your slide ready, buddy. Bernard uh sent us a great question uh uh over the uh over the slide, uh the the, the question form. So why don't we 
get started. Will, I've got your question here. Uh, we're going to get back right back up. Is there a requirement for how, lar how large your water collection reservoirs have to be? Phil, and that's one for you. So hold on to that one. Uh, why don't we kind of get the show? Let's get this party started, folks. Um, and let's let's get into our uh, a quick. I guess I got a quick news updates for you all. So uh, so it looks like what's happening is it looks like there's a lot of signs going on right now that restrictions are loosening. So there's signals that we're getting from uh, each of the islands. Um, you know, um, uh, the mayor of Honolulu, uh, Rick Blangiardi, is is kind of saying, hey, you know, if you've got um, if you've got an outdoor event that you're looking at for the beginning of January, plan for it. So it looks like there's a signal that, that's coming in from the, uh, the mayor of Oahu. Um, uh, the mayor of Kauai, Kauai has, um, they have eliminated the tier system. Now, they're still kind of on pseudo lockdown. There's still social distancing and masking and everything else. But they have eliminated the, you know, that tier one, two, and three, or A, B, and C. Those They've eliminated it. Uh, Maui, uh, the Maui guys, uh, uh, Victorino, he's kind of saying, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be loosening up. So it looks like it looks like loosening up is, is on the horizon. Uh, but I'll tell you what, if you're going to be going to the big island, uh, you you kind of better do it sooner rather than later because it looks like there may be a tax hike coming up uh, on the, the the hotels. It looks like uh, uh, I'm I'm sure Dylan's going to have a great comment about this. One. I can't wait to hear Dylan talk about this one. But uh, you're already paying a 10 percent tax. You're already paying a 10 percent transient accommodations tax when you check into a hotel. Uh, Big Island's going to add an another three percent of that, so we're going to have a nice nice round 13 percent tax <laughs> on your um, on your hotels. And uh, Maui uh, Heidi's not with us for today, so we're going to skip uh, the talking about the, the the Maui market, but it may be cooling off. There's a little bit of cooling. The prices went just came down below a million dollars for a home before in Maui it was up a million, but there's a lot of fluctuation and then and that that happens in in a in an, an expert area uh that I'm I am not the expert in. So you look at that little graph on the right hand side that there our, our case spike is we're we're pretty much right back down to the pre-spike levels. Looks good. And uh, it's getting a little bit cooler. I think it's going to be a cool, uh, a cool fall. You look at the week here. We got we're we're going to be in uh, we're going to be 80, 80 and seventy one. Uh, so I don't know uh, what uh, <laughs> who's the girl from Chicago again? Uh, the the one from from Illinois. Yeah, that's uh, it, oh that's it, Mary Jean. Yeah, Mary Jean. So check that out. Mary Jean's going to be eighty this, this whole week. Hate to do that to you. Anyway, hey. So uh, let's 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 uh, let, let's catch up first with a few folks who have said who've given their their hellos. Uh, let's see, uh, Juliana, Juliana debut is with us. Aloha, Juliana, welcome. Good to see you again. And Kelly, uh, Kelly is a member of the Islander Ohana and also a Hawaii uh, homeowner on the Big Island. So Kelly, she's, sh you know? she's shopping right now. She's shopping right now. Kelly shopping. Are she hanging out? She's part of your crew this uh, this yep. weekend, Dylan. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, well. Uh, Kelly, you're you're you are in good hands as you as you already know. And uh, Joyce, Joyce, you've been away for a long time. I, I uh, you must I you must be really really homesick by by now. Uh, not to mention a little bit. My, my, my son just helped her husband do some work on the remodel to try and speed that up so Joyce can get home. So we're trying, Auntie Joyce. We're trying. <laughs> I dropped him off all day with with her husband Chris and did, did crown molding and painting and stuff. So crown molding and painting, awesome, 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 awesome. So, uh, so let's let's go some kind of new non real estate news updates. Uh, thing, things that are going on. Um, Dylan, you gave us a little bit of thing of an uh, of an earlier about the weather. How about if we jump over to Scott? Scott, what what do you see kind of going down Oahu news wise? Not real estate related. Yeah, that you want to talk I, about. I, I see. So I, I see where products are costing more nowadays. So that's going to pass down to on the consumer price index component. And Matson just. Um, they just sent out a notification that their shipping charges are, are going to increase. So if you're looking at moving over to Hawaii and shipping things, it's going to start to cost more. So all around, we're, you know, you're starting to see increases on on pricing on various products and, and services. That that bad boy is coming. And uh, I hope it's it's. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about it. Uh, OK, Dylan, uh, what's what's new on the big on that you want to report on? How about that well, tax? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, don't, don't let me the, distract you. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can talk about the tax thing later. We had an interesting story this week about uh, government corruption, right? So um, we had a former county council member and chairman and a two-time candidate for mayor plead guilty to federal in, embezzlement and, and bribery uh, this past week. So just interesting, you know, you think about that stuff happening in Chicago and other places, but 
it, it happens here also. And, and you know, the guy, the guy could have been the mayor um, in this last election, ran for, ran for office in the last election while embezzling and bribing people at his nonprofit organization. So, you know, <laughs> I, I, I am we are not immune. We are not immune from insane political corruption. So I, Dylan, I'm shocked. I'm shocked, shocked, shocked to hear it to say that there are humans that run for office, uh, fallen humans that run for office. I, I, I was told that it's angels. Only angels are in government uh, and only, uh, so I, I, I'm in shock. <laughs> Anyway, all right, all right, folks. I think that's uh that's enough for the news update. Let's let's kind of switch over to and and give us uh let's let's do some market updates. Uh, Scott, why don't we kind of go in, in reverse here? Scott, give us uh what's uh what's going on on Oahu, man? Yeah, I scoured everywhere looking for little changes here and there, but nothing's changing. Uh, Dylan and I, we always kind of talk about the number of active listings on the market for single family home and it homes, and it had been been hovering around like four hundred and forty. 430 and then it bumped up to about 455 and I was like hmm, are we going to see a trend here and this month it's back down to 438 so uh nothing's changed here I mean where our median home price this month hit a, a million fifty thousand again and the condos condos are going up to the inventory is shrinking significantly um so there's not a whole lot changing it's pretty much status quo prices are going up restricted inventory a lot of competition um I I did have success or I am having success right now. I wrote an offer the other day on a, on a condo, a little small one bedroom condo in town and in, in the urban core and no competition. And we're trying to get about 8% off the list price because they're overpriced, which is the trend that I'm starting to see. Sellers are starting to put their home on the market and they're trying to be aggressive with the price, which is the wrong strategy to do, which we had talked about before. Um, but the two, the two big things that I would say right now, I, I mentioned it last week about uh, the international buyer coming. So I just called this list, listing came on in Anaha and I called the agent and he said, man, almost three fourths of the showings that I've had have been to agents with foreign buyers doing FaceTime or Zoom showings. So it's there. That's the, you know, we were, I was talking about it and then I talked to someone who's like, yeah, I'm getting a ton of activity from that international buyer now. So it, it's there. I think it will come and I think that will change the dynamic. The other really interesting point to, to understand is the conforming loan limit for Hawaii for next year will go up. It's at eight, what, 823, 822, 375,000 right now, and it's going to go up to 937,500. What that means is the those conforming loans are easier to get and they're sta kind of standardized loans. So when you go to a lender, they'll sell it off in the secondary market. So for one, it's easier to qualify. You can put less down and you get a lower rate. Once you get above that, then you're in jumbo loan territory. And what ends up happening is you got to put more money down, higher rate, and it gets more restrictive. So you just went from 822, 375 to 937, 500. That's going to give more borrowing power uh, to people who are getting loans and it's going to make, it's going to move people up and be able to move people up in price points. It's going to add more competition to the market. So a uh, oh, real quick shout out there, Ray Dix. Welcome back, Ray. Ray is also a member of the Islander Ohana and Ray, you got to Ray, I, if I can make a suggestion, you got to update your profile picture uh, because Ray, Ray is this, Ray is this awesome dude. Uh, he's a, a retired lawyer and he's got like this like amazingly long ponytail and it's just awesome so ray you got to kind of sh show us the ponytail dude um but anyway you know it's interesting scott because uh i i wish i had a a a, a quick instant replay of the last show predictions right because like one or two shows ago right uh you met i think it was you who mentioned that foreign buyers are coming and those foreign, you know, once the COVID thing kind of lifts the restrictions, foreign, uh, foreign buyers are coming uh, with 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 big bags of cash. And uh, it's kind of interesting to kind of see that. So every indication I'm getting and look, and if you think about it, right, the inflation pressures are clear. Everybody knows that inflation is not coming. It's here and it's not it doesn't show it's not going to doesn't seem to be what they believe to be was a temporary thing. It seems to be kind of perhaps a, a more, much more uh, uh, not quite so temporary. So you got inflation pressures, which, of course, real estate always follows inflation. Um, and then you got uh, the um, 
uh, this interest rate. So all the indicators are pointing that there's going to be more activity. And if anything, that the prices are going to get, are going to jump even more. It's not going to let up. We're going to have less inventory, more activity, more demand, et cetera. At least that's the way I'm seeing it from just from what we've been saying. Dylan, what's, uh, what's up on, what's, what's, what's going on on the big island? I keep, yeah, and, and to Scott's point, I keep reminding people we've taken for granted there have been no foreign buyers in our market in the last 18 months, right? So when they show up, it's going to, it's going to, continue to supplement that that buyer demand. But here on the big island, same thing, status quo, the market is still very strong. We are seeing a little bit of a slowdown on the west side of the island in terms of the number of, of homes and condos that are selling, mainly because there's just nothing on the market. And we're still, we, this is an insane, insane comparison, right? Scott just talked about 420, 430 homes on the market. That's what we have here. We have 420 some uh, homes on the market today. That number is normally 1,000 to 1,300, but it's insane that Oahu has the same amount of homes. There's a million people there. There's 200,000 people on the big island, right? And so there's five times as many people in the same amount of homes on the market to give you some perspective on competition on, on uh, Oahu. But here on the big island, I mean, median price continues to go up. With interesting stat this month was that the median price for homes and condos Island-wide was almost exactly the same. Uh, condos were like ten thousand dollars less, like four eighty-eight, and then wow, homes were four ninety-nine. Yeah, so the condo market is really on fire right now. Number of condos that have sold um, in the past month compared to a year ago were up twenty-three percent. So, and it, it already was you know warming up. Last September, last October is when people started coming back, and the market started getting getting um, warm again. And so. All the way across the board, final list of sold price is almost at 100% across the board. It's over 100% for condos. It's 98.3% for homes. It's 97% for land. So people are getting almost what they're they're asking um, across the board, 100% of it. And days on market has continued to fall. So things are selling really quickly. We're under 30 days on market on average now, which normally that's closer to 90 days. So yeah, nothing's, I mean, it's, it's status quo. It continues to be hot. The only thing that is putting any constraint on it right now is just a lack of inventory. This is going to be this. We're we're going to mean for a little bit of a wild ride. It's going to mean for a wild ride. Um, and as long as sellers don't get crazy, we keep talking about this, right? Because we're seeing this now too, where people are coming on the market. I showed two homes this past weekend that you know at six fifty would sell over asking price, but they priced them at seven twenty five. So now they've been on the market for forty days, right? So it's like that's just a mistake. Like I mean, you, if you price it at six fifty, you might have got six seventy five, seven hundred for it. But then you price it at seven twenty five, and nobody's going to buy it. And then you know it's going to sit for two months, and then everybody's going to think there's something wrong with it. So it's just a bad idea to be crazy about price or trying to be super aggressive right now because you, you're you're totally giving away the best parts of a crazy seller's market by just pricing people. And people are not going to they're, they're going to pay, but they're not going to be stupid about it, right? I mean, at some point as a buyer, they're going to say, "Okay, I've had enough. That's that's out of control." So. Well, I mean, the market quote the market is like like the law of gravity. It's got its limits. It it's it's not infinite, right? It does. It still it still works, right? It still yeah. works. There there's a price that people there's a price at that people will not pay. Uh, there's a price at that people will 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 walk away. It's it's not going to go on infinitely. Um, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think you know clearly you want to you want to be a. Uh, like uh, many friends of the Islander Ohana who are homeowners, you want to be a, a homeowner uh, and, you know, get in the market. Uh, and that's a, uh, that's a big thing. All right, great. Hey, listen, um, why don't we do this real quick? So Dylan, could you answer really quick the question? Then we'll get to, to, to Bernard's question. Uh, is there a requirement for how large your water collection reservoirs need to be on the Big Island? There, there's no requirement because it's one of those things like nobody requires you to buy toilet paper. Like you kind of figure it out yourself, right? Like, I mean, so. but, there's, but there's no regulation. There's no regulation. There's no regulation. No, I mean, th there's definitely best practices. And when you, you know, when you talk to a contractor who will build you a catchment system, they're going to, they're going to talk to you about, you know, how many members in your family, kind of what of your, what are your habits and you, you know, you'll figure it out. But normally like you want like a 10,000 gallon tank, like you can go down to like 7,000, but if you go down to like five, unless you're in a really rainy area that rains a lot, um, you know, you want to be able to make sure that, you know, if you got 30 days of no rain, that you're going to be able to, to survive that. And then of course you can always get water delivered, but yeah, no, no, no requirements or regulation. Okay. No requirements per, per se, but there's rules of thumb and you need to talk with yeah. your contractor. Scott, go ahead. Um, I actually just dealt with this a little bit with a buddy of mine who, um, he ran into insurance issues when it came to this, that the insurance company wanted a certain amount because if the house caught on fire and the fire department needed to tap the water to, to help put it out. They, they want a certain amount and then the numbers didn't even make sense. Now, 
not that it was a necessarily a requirement, but there was um, some kind of conditions with the insurance components. So there are, there are some, uh, some various variables that come, could come into play that you probably want to, you know, look at, make sure of before you go down that path of putting something in. That's a really good point. You know, it's, you know, Scott, when you mentioned that, I, I, I got to tell you, when we, uh, uh, my wife and I, we lived on the Big Island in the, in the Puna district uh, in like 91, I think. And we, I think we lasted for about nine months uh, before we, we realized it was not the place for us. But uh, so we're out there. Uh, we're at the, uh, Dylan, we're, we, we were in the Hawaiian beaches subdivision. And um, so we're, we got the, you know, we're. That was the Wild West back then. I mean, the it wild was, East. man. It <laughs> was, man. <laughs> It was. Isn't it still the Wild West anymore? Pahoa is not. It's still wild, right? Or maybe, or maybe it's has it gentrified. I don't know. But it was the Wild West back then. Here, quick, here, quick start, quick start. So, I remember driving around, and uh, we we noticed like there was all these uh, all these lots had uh, a bunch of like junker cars in them. All we junker cars, and the uh, and all of them had the um, the hood and the trunks were open, and we're you know we're driving it's like what is going on over here and what we found out that um it's not just abandoned cars no it was cars that they were growing pakalolo uh growing marijuana in the in the hood and in the trunk of the car and that's why the lids were up so that when the helicopters would come on over they would just run around and close all the close the hoods and close the trunks of all the cars so they wouldn't get busted that was back when pop was illegal uh, but anyway uh, wild west anyway boy did i get off off track so we're we're um so anyway, I hope you all enjoying that little short story. So we're 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 in the we're in the house, and then we're like, um, "Hey, where's the fire hydrants? <laughs> There's no such thing. There's no such thing as fire hydrants, you know." And so, and to your point, Scott and Dylan, you know, if you're going to have a catchment system, yeah, that that water it, that's 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 sitting in your in your catchment tank is going to potentially be used to put the put the fire out uh, of your house if your house catches on fire. Uh, and that was kind of one of the interesting things. And the other interesting thing was uh, we talked to our, our, our neighbors and, and we said, hey, um, what days does the garbage truck come by to, to pick up the trash? And and they said, well, uh, well, you can go and, and take out the trash any day you want. I'm like, really? It's like, yeah, yeah. You have to put it in your car and drive like, you know, 20 miles down and, and, and dump it off at the thing. Like, oh, OK. A lot of things we take for granted. A lot of things we take for granted. And it's just like, you know, normal, normal country living. But uh, there you go. Same thing when I lived in Puaco for all those years, the Puaco transfer stations right there. If you want to take your trash, you're putting it in the back of your truck and, and driving it up. Yeah. So fancy car is not a, not a good idea. You know, you, you don't want to be putting a pile of trash in the back of the Bentley. Not, mm -hmm. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Not not going to work. Uh, by, yeah. by the way, to your fire hydrant story, there's um, when looking at development projects and I've had I had some guys get shut down on this because they, they didn't do their due diligence. But if you're in the city municipal, you know, component Oahu, for example, and you want to go and build, if you're, if the fire hydrant is too far away from the lot, you're required to sprinkler your house, which can add significant costs. I think it's 100, 150 feet distance. If you're over that, then you're going to have to sprinkler your house it can add significant costs to, I mean, you're talking 20 grand probably at that point to have to have to do that. And complexity and maintenance and all that kind of other overhead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Wild one. All right. Okay. Uh, let's move on. We've got a, a, a question came into us from Bernard. Bernard, this is for you, buddy. So I want to, uh, uh, first of all, before I, before I go into Bernard's question, you know, uh, we, we've, if you're, you're probably on the newsletter, if you're not on the newsletter, you need to get on the newsletter. There's links in the description. You could click on, um, the newsletter will give you the invites. You'll get the links to everything. And typically there's also a, a question form where you can submit your questions. We take those questions, I queue them up as slides. And if you have, certainly if you come to the show live, like Bernard just did, I'm going to queue up your slide first. Uh, but uh, that all being said, uh, pop your questions in the comments and uh, let's get to it. So what I want to do here is, so Bernard, so here's Bernard's question. I'm still about two years away from relocating and buying a property to retire in Hawaii. That said, I'm visiting Oahu this December and staying for 24 days to get to know the island. Since it's premature to engage an agent at this time, what's your suggestion for me to get the best use of my time out there to get to know the Waikiki, Kaka'ako area properties and neighborhoods besides me just walking around the area? Well, the first thing I did is I corrected Bernard. It's not too early to get a hold of it. And I know that Scott would prefer that you actually get a hold of him so that you can kind of start this thing going first. So that's, let's just get that out of the way. But 
But here's the here's the big topic that I, I I want the three of us to talk about, which is what you know on your island. Uh, and let's start with Scott. You know, what's the best? How would you recommend people scope out the place for real estate purposes? You know, what would you recommend that they do? What's the best way? Uh, and get a little bit of details uh, in a little bit of details, like sp specific neighborhoods or areas to check or things to do. You know, what kind of advice would you give Dylan? What kind of advice would you give Scott? But let's just start out with Scott because it's a it's a question from from Bernard to Scott. Essentially, Scott, what do you tell Bernard to do to get to know uh, Waikiki and Kakaka? What's the best way for him to do that? Yeah, I love this question. I mean, I think it's a great question in, in quite a few different ways. For one, Bernard's doing the right thing and he's coming here and trying to get familiar with the island and he's doing it well in advance. I mean, you can see right here in this process, uh, it's buying real estate is not an event. It is a process. And, and Bernard's starting it two years ahead by trying to come and get familiar. Perfect. I mean, you, you, you couldn't do it much better than this. And he's staying for 24 days, which is a good amount of time. What you want to do is get out of tourist mode and get into what try, try to um, replicate as much of what it's like to live here in normal life and maybe doing work from here. But but the biggest thing to me is and this is why I do want you to reach out to us ahead of time is because, OK, right now you, you're you could be considering the entire island. And they're based on your lifestyle and our discussions, I can kind of help either recommend areas you wouldn't consider or hadn't considered or steer you away from something that um, you were considering that may not be the right fit for your lifestyle, for your needs, for your price point, whatever it is. So, yeah, let's have that conversation. Let's let's do a consultation. I probably do three or four a week um, just in this sense. We can meet each other, see if we're the right fit, and I can give you the recommendations. But the best thing when you're here is spend time in those areas. So you want to go down Waikiki or Kakaako. Okay, Waikiki is going to be divided up into multiple different little, basically, micro hoods. You know, you get on the far end of Waikiki cl close to Kapiolani Park versus the opposite end of Waikiki the opposite end of Waikiki closer to Ala Moana, it's a completely different lifestyle, completely different feel. You'd be doing different things and have different things at your access. So which do you like? So spend time, go to the restaurants, go to the shops, um, try to get out of tourist mode and spend some time in those areas. Usually what I recommend with people, and we just did this last week, um, we had somebody come over here, the side in between Eva, uh, Kailua and in town. Okay. let we went and showed them some properties. They're definitely coming here in those areas. And then they spent the day or two days in those areas trying to see what it's like being there. Do they like it? Do they like the shops? They went and uh, even met with people for schools and interviewed people for schools in those areas and did the commute drive for them. That was going to be an important com component. So they got up early, drove out to the area and did the drive. You know, uh, I'm so glad that you mentioned it because uh, Islander Ohana members who have gone through the course and through the cohorts will know what Scott's talking about. We call it the unvacation, and we go into great detail about what this unvacation is. Uh, and I would add, uh, uh, Scott, to what you're saying, I would add on maybe one or two more things only, which is Bernard. Get an Airbnb in Kakaako if you can. This way, you're you're you know you're you're living in the area just like another resident would be. You know, when you kind of want to simulate that. Yeah, the tricky part right now with COVID is just you, it's hard to be able to go to open houses, say, and just walk in. Let, uh, take, for example, Anaha and, and Kakaako. You can't even get in there without showing your VAX card or a, a test, you know, a, a negative COVID test. So they're, they're significantly restricting random people coming in. So they're not even allowing open houses right now. So you, you would need an appointment in that situation. But to me, if you're thinking two years down the road, market prices are going to change significantly. To me, it's more getting the neighborhood lifestyle because I, I always say you're buying a lifestyle. We can pick out the pretty home and get you a pretty home. But if you hate the, the community and the neighborhood you're in, you're never going to leave the house and then you're going to be miserable. So pick the pick the community first, figure out the lifestyle that you want to want to have and be in the right community. And then we can figure out the housing and, and where the housing component comes in with us having that discussion is, okay, what are you looking for? It's, you know, is this neighborhood within your price range or is there something else you should consider? Yeah, it's it's so it's so varied that you really got to have that, that conversation. Uh, that, that's just going to let you you know, basically folks let these guys help you by, by getting to know you a little bit better. And 
And uh, uh, Bernard, uh, Bernard agrees. Great guidance and advice. Yes, going on non-tourist mode. We'll be reaching out to you soon. Yeah, uh, Bernard, uh, that's what it, it's all about. Uh, and uh, uh, Will says, uh, Scott, can you please share your information so that I may reach out and contact you for a consultation? Great. Will, in that, you're, you're on YouTube. In the description right there, there's links. Click on the link. It's right there. Or I'm assuming that you're on the newsletter. Just hit reply and uh, we'll we'll connect you right in. Um, so that's the way to do that. And, and, and Jessica agrees that on vacation is critical. That's right. We thought we wanted to live in one area and ended up buying in a totally different area. Exactly. Precisely. They, they, um, did, it, they did it a great way. Wes and Jess did, did a great job. And in, in fact, we were headed down one path and we completely changed directions. But a part of that is getting out, getting familiar and thinking about it. They did a good yeah. job. Jess, how's that working out, by the way? Uh, fill us in on how you're, are you folks settling in, into your new spot? How do you enjoy that? I think you mentioned that you're just a short bike ride from Ala Moana Beach Park. How's it all kind of uh, working out for you? Uh, let us know. Uh, Bernard, staying in a rental. Love your lifestyle advice, Scott. Yeah, excellent. That's what it's all about, man. Uh, that is what it's all about. Okay, Dylan, give us the big island scoop. I mean, how would you give us some details, you know, add on to whatever Scott said. Uh, you know, what would you recommend for, for someone who's kind of like trying to scope out the big island? What, you know, what should they do? Where would they go? Same thing, but it's so much, it's so critical on the Big Island because it's so diverse, right? I mean, like, let alone neighborhoods, you're talking about climate and weather and rain and I mean, all kinds of different things. So, I mean, you can, you can, you can have a vastly different lifestyle in not a far, you're not being very far away from other places, but definitely when you're picking just region of the island, then you got to look at elevation inside of that region. And then do you want to be in a gated neighborhood? Do you want to be in something that's more, you know, older and, and has fixer uppers or more of that, that old time community feel. So definitely staying and, and staying for a little while. That's, that's one of the things about the islands is that, you know, you can get three or four days of beautiful weather that, you know, um, is maybe not representative of what the, the weather normally is where um, you might get three or four days where the weather is terrible, but that's not how it normally is too. Right. So you kind of want to stay for a week or two and really get a good sample of what the, 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 the climate is like and the weather is like. So you have an accurate representation if you're there, if you're there long-term because you can get, you know, two or three days where it rains cats and dogs, you know, all day long. And you think this is not right for me, but that could be an anomaly. Right. I mean, so, um, spending some additional time, not just doing like maybe one or two days in different places, you know, spend a week or two in different, different areas, even if it takes you a couple of different trips to really get a feel for the area that, that is best. And then you could go to the restaurants and go to the stores and, you know, get those, how far is the commute? Cause sometimes when you're on vacation, you're like, you don't mind driving a 30 minutes to a store, but if you actually live there, would you want to do that every time you got to run out and get milk or whatever, you know? So those are the kind of things you really got to think about. And yeah, just like the on vacation, right. Try and try and live like you normally would. On vacation. So, um, uh, Dylan, what would be the major, you know, if you were just to kind of break the, the big island down, uh, you know, into a few major districts, what would those major, if people want to rattle off a, a couple of, you know, I went here and here and here, what would you give those main, those major districts that people should try to spend s some time in? It, it's pretty easy. It's, it's East, West, North, and South. So, oh. <laughs> um, you know, like, and, 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 but, but, but then to further break that down, East and West, you have the population centers, right? You have Hilo and Kona on the East and the West side. So that's where the cities are at, big box stores, most of the jobs. Um, you know, that's where you're going to have your more of your, like, your as close to a city lifestyle as you're going to get town lifestyle here on the Big Island. North and South, very rural, uh, very remote, not that many amenities. But if that's what you're into, I mean, beautiful nature, hiking, beaches, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you kind of trade, you know, a little bit of that the 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 creature comforts for the, the the nature comforts so um that's the that's the biggest thing is, is first narrowing down like you know what what do you need are you going to need to work and, and commute every day or are you looking for more you don't mind being an hour away from from a walmart and you know you, you'll just do that every other week or something and you want to be in a very rural area and then price drives that right that's the first thing is you really got to figure out your price point before you can even start looking because if you look at on the west side something on the west side is going to cost you you know a hundred percent more than something on the south side of the island that's very similar in terms of acreage and home size and home you know home home construction all that kind of stuff just because of location so that's that should be a a big factor is figure out your your budget first and then see if the areas that fit the budget fit your lifestyle yeah you know and uh I to your, to your point, uh, uh, Ray uh, uh, chimed in, you know, also first know thyself. 
<laughs> Words of wisdom there, uh, Ray. Know thyself. What are your must-haves? What really matters? You gotta, you know, you gotta kind of figure. You kind of layer all that. And I think that's kind of why you want to have that conversation. You know, I mean, you could you could kind of watch what we're kind of doing over here and try to extrapolate that, or you could just kind of give a call and talk to the little over the phone or talk to Scott. And say, look, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, we're into, you know, uh, uh, and and that's that's kind of where it is. Uh, uh, Kelly, uh, and you gotta walk it. Photos don't exactly. You can't. You know, it's like we joke about this, right? You can't decide what the right place is for you by scrolling through Instagram. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Go ahead, Dylan. Uh, or, and also, uh, and also and reading like, and also reading like online blog posts, right? I mean, we get so many misrepresentations of different areas because who normally does online reviews? Negative people, right? <laughs> the thousands of people who are loving it and enjoy it are not going to take the time to write a long post online or review online or something. So. It's crazy. I mean, I, you know, we don't personally ever look at that stuff, right? And I get that stuff from people. I say, what about this? You know, they send me an article and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is this is crazy. You know, I mean, this is so misrepresentative of what this actually is. And sure, did this maybe happen? Did this person have that experience? Absolutely. But that's not, it, that's an exception, not the rule. So don't yeah, rely, well don't said. rely on the crazy online stuff. Don't, I mean, I can't don't tell you rely on people have, you know, read negative stuff and then go to an area and absolutely love it. And, you know, don't even really understand how someone could have said something like that about it. Hey man, just ch scroll down my YouTube channel on a couple of comments and you'll know what I'm talking about. And those are the ones I let through. I, those are the ones I let through. Uh, the, I didn't get the other ones. Anyway, anyway, Scott, you wanted to, to say something. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I, I've been doing this for almost 20 years on Oahu. And one of the things I really enjoy doing is going out and walking to get exercise in the neighborhoods. And I, and I remember this vividly, I walking up Manalani Heights, it's kind of a steeper area, uh, or I should say Wilhelmina Rise, and then you get into Manalani Heights. And I remember I'd walk down the side streets, I'm paying attention to the neighborhood and whatnot. And I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been selling in the neighborhood, no problem. You know, I understand it pretty well. But getting out and walking, I get a totally different feel. Street to street, oh, wow. From here, the, the utility poles go underground and the lots get a little bigger. And wow, look how this view opens up. Or look at these houses versus the ones two streets down. That, that that's the little nuances that you need to get an understanding of and, and get out and walk in is one of the best things you can do. I do it all the time and I'm, and, and I'm still, you know, I, I know these, the inventory in the neighborhood significantly better than most. You know, it's, it's like, it's amazing synchronicity and, and timing. Cause Scott is just when, you know, before you started talking about walking, Judy had submitted this comment and I popped it on as, as you were speaking, you know, walk the neighborhoods too. So exactly. And, and Judy can uh, add him and visit them day and night and sit and listen. Great idea. That's a, a, a cause you know, places are one thing during the day, but they're a little bit different at night, you know, uh, all kinds of, all kinds of strange creatures. All kinds of strange creatures come out at night, and we're not just talking about centipedes. You want, um, you want to know if the neighbors have twelve people living in the house that play the drums all night, right? And they got people <laughs> during the day when you're at the open house. So, <laughs> yeah, which, <laughs> yeah, who does band practice? Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, that's hilarious. That's so, it's so true, so true. Excellent, uh, great point. Uh, and uh, Guy uh, has chimed in. Uh, guy Laguire. Uh, you can start to decide on the internet, but do you all agree that sight unseen buying is usually people that know the island, whichever one it is, or at least have spent some time there before? Exactly. I mean, I remember we talked about this sight unseen a long time ago, and Heidi made the Heidi ma made the point that she was saying, you know, she sold a bunch of homes to sight unseen, but these were places that were sold, for example, in a condo building where these people had come to visit this condo building year after year after year after year, and they knew exactly what they were buying. So in a sense, it's not really sight unseen. Maybe that's specific, specific, specific unit, but really, you know, sight unseen. I couldn't think, I couldn't think of anything a higher risk than sight unseen buying in Hawaii. Truly, truly sight unseen. Like never been, but you know, never been before. In fact, I, I had an email from uh, a subscriber who's telling me, oh, hey, you know, about I got this job and I'm kind of moving in. Can you, you know? And, and I said, oh yeah, oh great, you know, how many times have you been to Hawaii before? He goes, never. I'm like, uh, okay, all right. Uh, you know, Danger Will Robinson is is what I is what I told him. Um, uh, Alex is chiming in. Thanks, Alex. I drove my neighborhood during the times people went to work, kids got out of school, and parents got off work. I don't want to be in a congested area. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you don't want to, you know, if you want to check out the congestion, try to drive into the urban center and get time yourself to get to the earth like a bank, go to the bank and get there by eight o'clock in the morning. And that'll give you a good taste. 
and it'll give you a really good taste of what the convention looks like in in Hawaii. Excellent, uh, great topic. Is there anything else you guys want to add on on this topic? Uh, getting yourself familiarized or acclimated to uh, to understanding a certain area, Scott? You want to add something? Yeah, the price point component is to me is big because if you come over here and you you want to go look around and get familiar with neighborhoods and and you, you know you can look online, but there's certain engaging us is good because we can give you that understanding and if you're looking if you start this search and come over here and you're in the wrong neighborhood one that you can't afford then you've basically wasted a fair amount of time so engage us and, Just reach and, out. And do it. The, the one other thing i was going to say i probably get 500 to a thousand inquiries a year from my from the website that's just hey get, give me information on this uh whatever do that you're asking me to do work i have no idea who you are on the other end if you're serious about it fill out my contact form and tell me about who you are or reach out introduce yourself tell me this is what i want to do sitting down for me and having the consultation is not only way better for you but for me as well it's it's a a time time energy saver camp component and i can't get to 500 to a thousand people who don't want me to, to who don't want to engage my me in conversation i don't have the time for that you know, and and I, we mentioned this before, you know, off uh, off the air. But you know, when when you tell Dylan or Scott that, hey, I've been following you guys on the show, da 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 da, -da, -da that tells us a lot, right? That tells us that you've been following. That tells us that you've heard what we've said. You've gone to the website. You've got this content. There's all kinds of things. So that's a big qualifier. I can tell you. Am I am I right, guys? I mean, if someone comes in and says, look, I follow you guys on on the show, that means a lot. Okay. Excellent. Uh, I think that's about. I think we got this one down pretty good here. Let's uh, let's move on. Uh, let's see. Nine forty-two. Why don't we do? Let's do. A, let's let's go into diamonds and deals real quick, and then we'll we'll, we'll come back. And we, if we have time, uh, we're gonna we'll, we'll hit back uh, with 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 the with some more questions. So so look, just to give you folks the uh, a, a a quick. Uh, let me see. So I'm going to give you folks a quick one before we get into diamonds and deals is where we, we talk about aspirational properties, diamonds, properties, uh, or deals, uh, or a little bit of both. Before we do that, uh, if you got some questions, you guys have been doing a great job. Send us the, you know, think about them, pop them in now so we can kind of queue them up and we can get to them. Otherwise, we got our pre-sent in questions that I've got planned out for the show. But just to give you all kind of a quick heads up on that, we're at this point. All right. So let's do, let's do diamonds and deals. What do we got over here? So uh, let's see. This is from Heidi's Light. Okay. Whoa. That's a great fault. That's a great shot. But I even kind of sing it. So we got the Ritz Residence Waikiki listed for 1.4. Scott, what are we looking at? Yeah, I decided to pick one a little different. This is resort zone Waikiki. This is you basically buy the unit and you put it in the hotel rental pool with the Ritz service level and whatnot. Um, this is a two bedroom, two bath, 1150 square feet, roughly and a huge lanai, it's like 400, almost 500 square feet. You can see it in the lower right-hand corner. It's this huge open lanai. Um, and what I love about the Ritz, so there's a couple of things. Why I picked this one, it's totally different. If you want transient vacation rental unit, that's actually a condo that you put into the hotel rental pool. This is an option. Um, and you, there is a restriction on the amount of days that you can use it. There's a maximum number of days that you can use it because it's intended to be put into the hotel rental pool. Um, but I love the Ritz residence. My uh, good buddy of mine actually was the owner's rep on the, the, the build out of these. And um, Kiora is the Italian restaurant there. It's one of my favorite restaurants. If you look to the right of the building picture, you look out across Fort DeRussi Park out to the sunset. So you get this greenery in front of you. You don't have any big buildings in front of you. And you have this open space out to sunsets and out, out to the ocean, which is really nice. It's got this nice relaxed feel. And Kiora, the Italian restaurant there is one of my favorites. They were doing a once a month pasta tasting and I was going every month and it got to be so popular with the locals. They had to stop it because the the, the hotel guests couldn't get in into the restaurant during those days. But it's got a great seating, great amenity pools, as you can see in the upper right corner. Um, you look out across Fort Darussi Park, you got full kitchen, two bedroom, two bath, uh, 1.48 million in Waikiki. So Scott, can you, um, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole here and I think we should actually have a segment about this com as a completely separate, uh, a segment in, in a future show, but very quickly, what do the, what do the numbers, what does the sort of the ROI generally speaking look like on this kind of a unit? Let's say you buy it and you, 
let's say you you come on and you stay let's say 30 days out of the year let's just say for example and you rent that out the remaining the remaining 11 months or something like that what does the what does the ROI look like you know being in you know you put it in the hotel the way that this works folks is there's a hotel it's a hotel you put it in the, what they call the hotel pool the hotel does the management the, the it does kind of takes care of it the cleaning everything else you just kind of walk away uh, and you come back when when you want to use it it's almost like a timeshare so to speak in that sense but Scott how what does generally speaking what does the ROI ROI kind of look like on something like this? The ROIs are typically lower and I would be hesitant to answer that right now because yeah, don't. A, a year and a half has just happened of, you right. know, we have, hadn't had any tourists and now we're having this kind of ebb and flow with what's going on. So I have no idea what the numbers are right now. I'd have to dig into it. Yeah. But it's just generally, generally, generally speaking. They're ge generally lower. Significant. They're lower than to me. And, and he, here's the methodology. If you, at, People that are buying these are wanting to buy them partially for personal use and partially for investment, right? And anytime you bring the personal use component into something, it's going to affect your ROI, right? So right. If, you, right. if you were to buy some, and you're putting, because you're putting it not only into a rental pool, but you're putting it into the Ritz rental pool, there's there are heavy fees for that. And there's a high amen, or high service level, high amenity level that comes with that. And, and there's a cost to it. Got it. Got it. So if you're looking for an investment, go buy some bonds or go buy some small uh, small cap growth funds. Uh, but if you're looking for a, a place to, that, that you want to live in, it's less about the ROI and it's more about the lifestyle and leveraging that. Yeah. A lot of times if you're breaking even, you got a free, you got a free million dollar condo to stay in in corner, right? That's the way you got to think about it, right? It's like your ROI is your lifestyle and your personal enjoyment, right? So breaking uh, even would be amazing, right? Breaking I mean, even would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Right, that would be, that would be phenomenal. All right, that's the good. right mindset to have in a in a property like this. You know, some people when they want to, you know, do that two or three month a year type condo, it's like, hey, if the other nine months just pays for your HOA fees and your taxes and you know all of the other fees that come along with it, and you know maybe some repair and maintenance and stuff. But hey, if you're breaking even, you got you're living for free for two or three months in an oceanfront condo, you know, like that's, <laughs> also, that that's also appreciating. That's also appreciating with the market. That's, you know, exactly. a nice hedging and inflation. It's, it's when, yeah. now, now when, when you say breaking even, what do you mean by, by breaking even? Are, are you saying, for, for example, I come up with the down payment and then my, my, so my that's mortgage. A, that's a big piece of it. And again, just generally speaking, if you have a mortgage, a lot of times it's, you know, it's going to definitely be closer to breaking even if, or maybe, maybe in the red a little bit, if you pay cash, a lot of times, even with, you know, 40, 50% occupancy, you're going to at least break even, right? You're going to pay for all your taxes, all your HOA fees, any additional fees you need to be covering. And so, you know, then, then Got it. and obviously that's going to not be even throughout the year because the months that you use it, you have no income, right? So you may sure. have some, some net income over the nine months you don't use it, but then that's going to pay for the months that you do use it. So, you know, you got to look at it as a whole for 12 months. Got it. Got it. And your, got fin it. your financing options on these types of properties are much more restrictive. They're much more challenging. Yeah. And I would say they are more mm. challenging per condo tell. Condo tell is kind of the classification for a lot of these. Condo tell, hotel condo. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, I, ideally, if, if you can pay cash or put like a huge down on it um, and then you're 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 kind of you're you're swimming off of the off of the residuals. And, and almost always the the per night rental rate is is related to the overall value of the condo, right? So if you're buying a $200,000 condo, your per nightly rate may only be like 80 bucks a night. But if you're buying a million dollar condo, the nightly rate's going to be eight, 900 bucks a night, right? So at the Ritz, right? So, so, so a lot of times people like, they, they, you know, they, they, they try and like get really specific about it and say, well, if I buy that $600,000 condo, it's $800,000 condo. And it's like, again, this is a general, generally speaking, but if you really dig into it, a lot of times it's just a ratio, like the value of the property, there's a reason the property is valued at that. And the per night rate is going to be, is going to reflect that. It's going to re yeah. be re reflective. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Absolutely. Good. Uh, a guy uh, uh, chimed in again. So a um, guy must be a coworker of yours, Scott, because he said, Scott, as you said at dinner last night, so guy, guy, you're disclosing some, uh, don't tell us where, where you guys went to dinner. Buyer wants to connect with the agent so that we can make best use of your time and our time. Realtors have become more protective of our time. Yeah, I mean, people, you know, some people think that, well, you know, it's like, it's human nature, right? It's not my, as the buyer, it's not my job to figure out if it's worth your time. That's not my job. I'm just going to pop in the question to you. You guys got to figure out if you want to answer or not. If it's, if your time is valuable, you have to tell me about that because as far as I'm concerned, it's everything's free. Everything's free on the internet. You know, Scott, I, I get all kinds of people who ask me all kinds of questions like, 
you know, this is why you want to be part of the Islander Ohana, because we go over all this in the class. Okay. Uh, and, and Jim and Kath. Hey, Jim and Kath. Welcome back. I remember you folks from um, uh, previous shows also want to check with your lender. Many lenders won't lend on this type of property. Yeah, exactly. It's an investor property. It's not an owner occupant. It's all that kind of stuff, different ratios. It's not a, it you know, doesn't have all those qualifications. All right. Let's go on to the next one over here. What do we got here? We got a five. Is this the? Is this a new one, Dylan? A five five bedroom, six bath in Cuyahoga on five acres, six point two eight. Man, again, yeah, just, a, just a beautiful. I mean, estate property on five acres. It's not in like any crazy gated community. I think it's kind of over on its own. I couldn't, you know, we can't even put enough pictures to do it justice. But it's got this. It's up, you know, at like nine hundred feet of elevation, you know, on on a steep on a steep drop off. So you got this ridiculous sweeping ocean view and nothing. I mean, that's that's you know that's the the living room looking out into the pool, the infinity ridiculous. pool looking out into the Pacific Ocean, right? Ridiculous. So, uh, just ridiculous. Yeah. So if you look at it for the huge, you know, it's actually got three half baths. <laughs> it's got six full baths and three half baths. So just an enormous estate property. Beautiful. Like you see the kitchen there with all the wood finishing. Um, big bath, you know, that bathroom's got a huge soaking tub in it and a, and a garden view, you know, picture windows in the bathroom. Just killer, killer, you know, once once in a lifetime type of property. Man, this uh, this looks absolutely. You know, because you can get a five or six million dollar house in the resort, the resort areas. You know where you have you have neighbors and you have uh, all the amenities and stuff like that. So you know if you if you're in that type of price range, it's really we have lots of options, right? And this is to me a much cooler option where you're on five acres, you're 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 secluded, um, you don't have to deal with all the HOA issues and the maintenance fee issues and all that kind of stuff, and still have just this amazing, very unique property. Man, that is. Uh... I'm still kind of blown away by the whole idea of it, right? Five acres on the big on is like a, it's a, it's a, in, in Kaho, it's a huge monster property, right? I'm, yeah. I'm just kind of thinking, Hey gang, maybe we can all kind of, can we all like partner up and like all go in together on this and kind of do like a, a, a fractional ownership on a five bedroom, six bath. You know, that's a winner, man. Maybe a, maybe a topic for another show, but I've been in talking to Picasso. Have you, have you heard of them, Scott? It's, it's this, it's this, um, it's a new company, Spencer Ranscroft, who was a founder of Zillow. He left Zillow and now he started this new this new startup. But they're they're basically doing that. They're they're doing fractional ownership up to eight people. So what they're doing is they're creating LLCs, buying properties, and then you can buy um shares in the property buy one share. at a time. So you can buy 50% of it or 20% of it or whatever you want. And they they work out and manage. So it's so for this for the person who wants to be a second homeowner but doesn't want to buy. 100% of a property. It's somewhat like a timeshare, but not, not the same, right? Like so a timeshare, but different. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I think it's a really cool, innovative idea. And for markets like ours, where even if it's just two owners, right, you do 50% of the year or something like that. And you don't have to worry about incurring the cost of the whole property. It seems like a very cool, innovative idea. Yeah, Dylan, the living in Hawaii, Ohana is going to go in on and buy and buy the, <laughs> the, the five acre property on Cahill. Gang, what do y'all say? Are y'all in with me? Come on, pony it up. Let's do it. Let's do it. Damn, that would be amazing. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, it's in interesting that you mentioned that because I'm working with a, a company out of Canada doing that on the luxury home side. And where I want to say it was like 2009, 2010, where fractional ownership concept came to Oahu and for condos. And, and actually how it was done in the beginning was you, you fractionalize it based on, to, let's say, eight different ownerships. And you actually took an ownership stake for a fraction of the property, whatever your percentage is, and then you could utilize it during that block of time. It's modified a little bit now, and it's interesting because the companies are buying the, the property, so it's holistically owned, and then you're buying kind of a share piece, uh, a stock cer certificate piece, so to speak, in it. And it's interesting to, to try to think about, okay, what is the better route to go? You know, What's your return? How do you sell that? You know, you have to either sell the, the stock piece and, and where is their value? How much value is there in that? And what kind of returns can you get? But yeah, you can reduce the reduce your costs, you know, reduce your buy in amount and get into something that's worth significantly more. And you get an allocated portion of time. Interesting concept. OK, well, Heather's in. Heather's in with us. So Heather's working with, with Dylan, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Right. Yep. Right. Till night. I, yeah. Heather, right, let's awesome. do it. Let's let's do it, Heather. I, I let's man, let's let's figure this out. There we it would be what a fantasy thing, fun fun thing, right? Let's all Islander Ohano opens up, you know, buys a, a five a, a 
five acres, six million dollar property. Uh, that's awesome. The uh, uh, Jim and Kath, uh, the the conventional loans. Yeah, you must have just missed it. We 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 talked about that earlier in in the show how the conventional loan limits are are going up. Uh, and uh, 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 Corinne. Uh, Corinne says, is there a condo in Kauai? Yes, there is. We just don't get a whole lot of inquiries from Kauai or we'd have a Kauai uh, co-host. Uh, but uh, uh, Corinne just, uh, Dylan's got great contacts uh, on on Kauai, experienced people who can help. Click on the link in the description uh, and send us in your form. We'll be absolutely happy to help you up with, with an expert who knows Kauai like the back of their hands. All right. Uh, all right, gang. So we're going to uh, gonna wrap this up over here. Last chance to pop in uh, whatever questions or comments uh, you want to, and you want to add to us right now. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on. I think that's, I think that's pretty much it. The uh, we're going to go to our closing thoughts and I've got the wrong label on it. So you're going to have to ignore it when you see it. So I've got next show is October 15th. It's not October 15th. That's today is October 15th. I should take that off to make it timeless. I could do it. I could do a live editing, but that's like watching paint drive. Y'all know the idea. We're going to meet in two weeks, which will be what the 29th, 29th of October. Uh, let's go through, let's go through our closing, our, our closing thoughts. Uh, why don't we start with Scott first and then Dylan, you close it up. Scott, what's your, what's your closing thought today? Yeah, I, I always go back to, um, you know, there's the, the element of growth, you know, in order to have growth, you have to become uncomfortable. And when you and when you do have growth, there's a, a bigger satisfactory uh, kind of experience or aha moment at the end of that. And I, I always look for trying to you know, get comfortable being un, uncomfortable is one of my biggest things. And how do you step outside the box and, and constantly push for growth and learning and and having a cool experience, different experiences going on this journey? No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Dylan, what you got for us, buddy? All right, I got it. If you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you're determined to learn, no one can stop you. And just want to say, say that one. Okay, back up. You, okay, that's a great one, but back it up and say it again slowly. Slowly. Right. If you are not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. Love and, that. and just in the context of appreciate everybody coming on and watching and learning and being educated and nobody can stop you. You know, I gang, uh, the, the 38 of the 39 of you that are, that are, <clears throat> that are still here with us, you are part of an elite group you're the ones that kind of take the time to kind of research and you're the folks that come out ahead because you got, you're here with us, you're listening in, you know, where, where, where the archives of the show are, you're part of the newsletter, I'm sure. Uh, and this is what it takes. And, you know, I've get, I, I can't tell you guys, uh, oh, it's, oh, we got a little bit of, Hey, Hey, hey but, you know, I just thought about this. So thank you, Amancio. Uh, abundance mindset over scarcity mindset. Hey, if you folks got your your closing thoughts, pop them in. I I love that I love to, to throw them on there. It's great. That's a great idea. Uh, if you got words of wisdom, pop them in. Love to see it. Um, this is this is it, right, Judy? Uh, join the Islander Ohana and learn tons of pertinent info. And this is the thing, you know the the this this whole thing is is about. You know, what I've noticed is that the, the people that go through the programs, right? The people that go through the show, the people that reach out to us, the people that join the Islander Ohana, they to 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 a person everyone has like an amazing experience and if you look at those comments on if you look at the comments on various blogs dylan you get like all kinds of horror stories doesn't happen with us not to say that it won't ever happen but we've got a process that we go through because we've been there done that's you know dylan was born and raised here i've been here for close to 40 years scott's been here for over 20 years this is what you get when you have this this kind of experience so yeah hey we got the the comments coming in guy Lagoy, great job you guys on the show seriously well done guy come on in buddy uh water's the water's fine great great to see you here again uh another great show thanks patrick really 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 appreciate it. oh i love this one jim and kath if you're not first you're last good one good one ricky Dad. bobby that's the the philosopher ricky bobby <laughs> Ricky Bob, that's the baby Jesus with the beard. That's that's how, that's what I remember on that show. So hey, I I got my I'll, I'll close it with my closing thought. My closing thought is this: is I say, if you happen to be a person who who has read the Bible or likes reading the Bible, try this. I've been doing this now for I want to say almost a year, and it's been really really cool. Uh, the section, the, the book of Proverbs is really cool. The book of Proverbs has 31 chapters in Proverbs. Uh, try to read a chapter of Proverbs that correlates to the day of the month. So today is the 15th. Read Proverbs 15. This and, and read it again, the repetition, read it again and again and again, month after month after month. Uh, the, it is an incredible, incredible, incredible book of wisdom. Read 
Proverbs. All right. Uh, and uh, let's see. We got some. Uh, Pat is chiming in here. Mahalo. Great show as always. Pa Pam, it's great because you're here. It's great because you're a part of it. That's what makes it great. Uh, Will, great show. Always learn something. Yeah, me too. Me too. That's what makes it so much fun. All right. Uh, aloha, folks. I'm going to go go right down the line. Uh, Dylan and then Scott, give your alohas. Have a great, week great weekend, everybody. Aloha. Aloha, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, aloha, in. folks. Yeah, thanks for all being here. Have a great week. We'll see you folks in two weeks.